If you wanna throw your own small to medium sized events, or if you're already doing audio, video, and lighting in a church setting or any setting at all, then you're gonna love this video because I'm gonna be sharing some tips from our process here at Think Media on how we throw our masterminds or our YouTube workshops and some of the gear and tools that we use to make a really cool world-class setup that sounds great, looks great, how we capture everything. And so join me for five tips on audio, video, and lighting right now. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up, Sean Cannell here at our Think Media Mastermind in Las Vegas, which is an event that we do every few months for business leaders and people that wanna master modern marketing and growing their influence on YouTube and social media. But what we've been doing is we've wanted to actually build our own small to mid-size event setup. So we don't always have to rent AVL. We were interested in picking out gear. And so in this video, I'm gonna be going through the gear that we chose and why to create kind of the atmosphere and the vibe for not just giving those that are at the event a great experience, but also capturing it so that we can put it in kind of online courses or membership areas. And so let's dive right into it with tip number one, and that's audio. So to kick it off with audio comes our PA system or the speakers that we wanted to use for doing a small event. Now, we wanted the flexibility to be able to take speakers with us to pretty much any room or any venue here in Las Vegas. We even wanted to be able to go to like an open air or a park to be able to have audio and PA stands for public address, right? So you want that amplification. And so what we ended up choosing was the Bose S1 Pro speakers. These things are amazing. You could get away with just using one of them, but we ultimately got two. And the cool thing about these speakers is they actually have a built-in mixer. And so our setup right now is a little more sophisticated, but these speakers allow you in our first mastermind to just even plug like a Sennheiser AVX microphone right into the rear of the speaker, adjust the gain on there. And they also have the ability to be battery powered. Like we said, you could take it to a park or someplace where maybe you can't plug in and have that amplification that you need for great audio. I love these speakers because you have, I think, three inputs, including one of those being Bluetooth, or um, an auxiliary input, and then there's that line out. And so we ultimately invested in two so we could connect them together here in a room for an event of about 20 people. But with the amplification on these speakers, I'd say you could probably run an event of 100 or more, depending on the room acoustics. And the Bose S1 Pro comes in at around $599 for one of them here in the US. But we actually picked them up with the backpacks that they can come with that are custom and they fit the speakers so that again, if you wanted to just throw it on and roll into a park or roll into any kind of venue or hotel or small workshop space, they're really easy to travel. You can put any cabling that you need in the pockets around that. And then again, if you want the batteries, you can get extra batteries and a lot of cool things. So after we grabbed those, we grabbed a couple of speaker stands, we were good to go for our amplification. So next up for audio is our microphones. Now at the first event, we used the Sennheiser AVX microphones, which work on a wireless band. We plug those guys into the back of the uh, Bose S1 Pros directly and tried to keep it super lean and mean. However, we're at a hotel here in Las Vegas and we experienced a lot of cutting out with them and that's one of the things you may run into at events is other signals, is the Wi-Fi gonna work? And even with lower quality like analog or radio frequency mics, um, you could run into issues. So coming up to this next event, we made the investment in some Shure mics, which are the QLXD system with some SM58 wireless microphones. And um, they were a big investment. These are around 1300 each, but they'll really allow us to do events pretty much anywhere on the West Coast, right? And at some point, your investment in wireless microphones is not about the quality of the microphone, it's about the quality of the technology. And these allow you to come into the room, scan for frequencies to make sure you're gonna be on something that is without interference. And we are super impressed with them so far, did a lot of research. And so by the way, if you wanna check out any of the gear we're mentioning, we'll do a full list in the description below. So I will admit, we moved a little bit away from the original super simple setup that I intended and wanted to just actually step into kind of of a pro prosumer arena. So we invested in an SLR snake. Thing costs around $150 from Seismic on Amazon. So far, so good. And we run that from you know the stage area 
up to this Rode mixer here. Now we actually already had the Rodecaster that we've been using for the Think Marketing podcast lately. And that's kind of what this thing's intended for, but it actually is a killer kind of mini event mixer. And the reason being is we've got the four channels. And so for us, we use two handhelds so people can do Q and A and we can speak up on stage. Plus we also send the laptop audio back to the mixer here so that we can do video tutorials, take people through trainings or even run music from up there as well and because we do have more channels we give we have flexibility with the mixer um, or rather with the snake if we ever want to upgrade in the future the really cool thing about using the roadcaster is actually the fact that it records for our first event we just used a zoom h4n to capture the audio and that's actually one of the main reasons that we're using mics you know in a room this size we could probably get away without amplification however this is a couple day event so it allows us to save our voices by using amplification and just kind of even it out in the room and make it a great experience but really what we wanted is the ability to capture all the content so that we can you know save that on video save that on audio and use that for other purposes and so we captured that on a Zoom H4n in the first event, but the Rodecaster is super awesome. Just put in a micro SD card, and then you're able to get a combined file as well as a tracked out file and have all the audio from whatever sources we send to it um, in a very simple and streamlined package. We're even excited about the idea of making our event a little bit more dynamic with the sample pads that are included here. And so a super cool mixer that you don't just have to use for podcasting, you could use it for different things things in your business and brand. So that covers audio, but now let's jump into video for shooting small to mid-size events. And we really were intentional about this setup. You know, we have our conference every September here in Las Vegas, and it's called Grow With Video Live. And that was back when we wanted to pick up a couple A6400 Sony cameras, mainly because they're great cameras, but they don't have a record limit, right? So you get kind of that mirrorless vibe, interchangeable lenses vibe, without jumping into some kind of a cinema camera or you know maybe a lesser camcorder in some ways, and you're able to create a pretty dynamic setup. And what we actually use for this camera is the um, continuous power plug. So these plug right into the uh, battery port, and then we're able to have full 4K, no issues with overheating, and so we've shot uh, events at 4K 30. Sometimes if we wanna save file size, we can do, of course, 1080p. And we've got a Tamron lens on one of them, the 28 to 75, 2.8, which we have a little bit closer for the event. And we did make the big investment though into the 70 to 200 G Master. And so this one is an over $2,000 lens, but to have that incredibly crispy 2.8 aperture so you can get depth of field and have just that beautiful shot that's a very you know great investment and we knew we were going to be doing multiple events with this setup additionally we've got a feel world monitor on here this is one of the 4k ones you know feel world makes some great budget monitors that go from anywhere from like a hundred dollars to around three hundred dollars um, and they can offer you a lot of cinematic features if you're looking for uh, those types of things. But this just like is nice so that when someone's sitting in a stool and doing like follow focus of a speaker on a stage, they're able to do that. For a small event like this, we kind of have more lockdown and just reposition shots. But at our bigger event, when people are moving around the stage, I also wanted to invest in a really good fluid head tripod. And so this is an FSB-8, which is a satchler head. And so this, this head, I think, is like 1,600, two grand. I grabbed one off eBay for right around a grand. It was banged up, but these things like last forever. You have multiple tightness adjustment points, so you can have very smooth following of a speaker. One of the biggest pet peeves that I see is shaky uh, footage from cameras at events. When it's shaking, it's either not balanced or they don't have a very good tripod or it's not weighted right. And so those kind of details matter. And then on our other tripod, it's just kind of a simple Manfrotto fluid head and then it's Manfrotto sticks on both sides. And so, and then as far as capturing goes for video, we just capture right to the SD cards. And you of course could plug in audio from a source if you wanted to run a cable from your board or even go directly into the camera somehow with like some Rode wireless Go microphones or something wireless. 
And we sometimes would even do a redundant audio by plugging into one of the audio ports. But for us, we're capturing all that audio on the road caster to the SD card. And then we're just gonna sync that up in editing. And that could seem like a hassle, but Omar on the Think Media team actually has a video about how to quickly edit together multi-angle and audio in Adobe Premiere Pro. And he does that for video podcasting where we just grab both SD cards, the micro SD card, throw it in a project, and then get that edit done super quick so that you can actually get your content to its final destination as fast as possible. So I highly recommend you check that video out. I'll link it up on the YouTube card and put it in the description below as well. So tip number three is lighting, and lighting's a big deal. What we're using here is a couple Fulvatech Studio Pro kind of light panels that you would use for like a home setup, and we're using it kind of for an event. Um, but actually, I did a video about these, I'll link to that as well. And this kit runs around $300, and because it has the barn doors, we kind of just put it over here uh, against the wall, you know, leaning a little bit, but hey, praying for safety and uh, we're able to kind of direct the light with the barn doors. I'd say this, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I notice events make, especially if they're small events and they're even doing workshops, is they do no lighting at all. They do just the lights from above and there's nasty shadows under people's eyes and cameras don't have enough light to look good. So this isn't even really overly lit, it's just enough to not only enhance the receptivity and the ability for the people here to experience the content, but it's also for the video. We want the people that that are watching it in post to see that you know really quality end product. I mean, I was at an event recently that the workshops actually had like the lights off and no light at all. And I even heard people complaining about the live stream. And so lighting is definitely something to be intentional about. And then additionally, we also wanted to add a little ambiance with some color and some RGB lighting. Now this was kind of a last minute decision on the way out of the garage today. And this last Cyber Monday, I grabbed a three lighting kit from GVM, from b &H Photo. They're just these really cool light panels that uh, have a full RGB spectrum on them. This side of the room is a little bit further from the wall, so we're just splashing some blue up this side behind the pipe and drape, and then on the other side, we're splashing the blue up there as well. I will say that the one thing that we invested in from the venue is we have them set up the pipe and drape, which gives us that nice clean background, and it also allows us to hide all the chaos and all the wires. Um, as opposed to having to find out a way to keep those clean in some other situation. Which brings us to tip number four, and that is the presentation itself. That means the actual teaching, or do you have slides, do you got a deck to share, and uh, we like to have that. When we do teachings and workshops and masterminds, not only do we often teach off of a keynote or a PowerPoint, but we also like to do screen share, so you can actually dive into analytics. You know, at our mastermind, we dive into people's businesses. We lift up their, uh, the hood behind their YouTube channel, their websites, and we break them down. And so for an event like this, at a kind of a small to mid-size event, we invested in a 65-inch TV, and then we just grabbed a uh, stand off of Amazon, and uh, TV came from Costco. Stand was around like 80 bucks or something. It was about $600 for both of those things. And then with HDMI into the dongle of my MacBook, we're able to put up the content up there. I just extend the desktop. Make sure to change your desktop wallpaper to something that you know ties into the brand of the event. That's just a tip, I think, for kind of continuity. And then uh, another big thing is I got a Logitech uh, remote. You know, I could stand and be stuck to the podium itself, but whenever I travel, because even a lot of events I speak at are some oftentimes underprepared, um, I'll also travel with this so I can um, move around the stage while advancing my slides. And so uh, we're able to do that here so we can interact with uh, the guests that come. And so you've got the remote, and then we also send audio from the laptop here uh, that goes into our snake that we talked about earlier to the back of the room and so that we're able to have that. At our first event, you know, this laptop's got Bluetooth and the Bose S1 have Bluetooth as well. So you actually, with uh, the Bose S1 Pros alone, you could probably do a lean and mean setup and you probably wouldn't be in a situation where there'd be any issues like we had with Wi-Fi. We're in Vegas, there's like all kinds of stuff happening. If you were just kind of rural, smaller event space, you'd probably have no problems. And then uh, the other thing that we love to do is teach off a whiteboard, and this is no uh, joke whiteboard, this is King Flip. That's uh, the king of you know big presentations. 
And you know, a tip here is you gotta have the right markers. These are some Sharpie Magnums. Come on, you know what we're talking about. And then you want to at least go with the king size. And so um, we uh, definitely use this to break down other training. And, and then just kind of think about the setup. So we're able to go from slide deck, from screen share, you know, sharing content on Wi-Fi, to breaking down training, and really just trying to create a clean aesthetic so that the teaching has no distraction and people can experience the maximum impact when they come to our events. So we're gonna to get to tip number five in just a second, but if you've been getting value out of this video, can you hit the like button? And I wanna pass the question off to you. What kind of events or audio, video, and lighting production have you done or are you involved in? And do you have any tips? Let me know in the comments section below. And remember, some of the best tips and feedback come from you, the Think Media community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comments section. So that brings us to tip number five, and that is pay attention to the details. I think the difference between a great event or an event that people complain about or just don't have the greatest experience at is the details. I mean, it's things like, you know, is there Wi-Fi available? And I don't even mean Wi-Fi for the guests necessarily. I mean, is your Wi-Fi even working? Is it fast enough? Like, does the content actually play? Like, can you even play the videos? I've been to video conferences where they couldn't play the videos. I mean, details really, really matter. You know, the venue. I think selecting the venue, of course, budget matters, but we looked around the city and different hotels had different aesthetics. You know, for us, we kind of just wanted a modern, minimalist, clean vibe. And so we did the research and we love the room here at the Sahara that we found. And, you know, our event, Grow With Video Live, which if you actually want to attend, it's actually in a different you know, room um, that's just a few rooms over from here happens every year. And you can check that out at growthvideolive.com. But, you know, think about the details and the vibe of the room. Does it feel too empty? You know, in this case, because it's a smaller event, we pulled the pipe and drape forward and we also don't have any extra chairs out. You know, I'll be in rooms where there's 200 people at the event and you have 400 chairs down. It kills the energy, bro. Like you have to actually control the energy in the room and think about the vibe and the aesthetic. Details, cleaning up your cables. I mean, you maybe have heard it said that how you do anything is how you do everything. So once we've set everything up, we wanna clean the tables up. We wanna think about just excellence in those small things and just think about what people are seeing because I feel like those things really honor your guests and they just speak to excellence that can also permeate the culture of your whole company. You know, I think less is more. I, I definitely think that there's not a ton happening here. Splash a little color on the walls, you know, simple backdrop, but then we just want it to be all about the impact of the content. And so sometimes maybe removing things or not trying to overdo it with bells and whistles if they actually become a distraction and not something that adds to the impact. Um, I think checklists, you know, if you're gonna be setting up an event yourself and not hiring out AVL, you know, make sure that you got checklists. Even when it's just you, like, did you bring the cable? Did you bring the plate for the tripod? Do you have the right, you know, connector? All those little details and making sure that you check those boxes when you're setting up and tearing down, that's super important. You know, and other things, we have um, a, a clock and, you know, to keep time, we just do it on an iPad with a little app called Flick and uh, it's uh, on a little stand that we use. And the cool thing about that is it keeps us on time. You know, I've been to events that actually don't even give their speaker a proper confidence monitor and it makes it really tough, not just for the speaker to stay on time, it makes it tough for the whole event to actually stay dialed and then things start getting behind. And so it's one of those things that even when it's just us, and this event's pretty chill, I mean, it's highly interactive, we want to constantly be aware of how much time we have left, whether um, Heather Torres is training or whether uh, we're just doing interactions so we can keep things on time. That honors your schedule, it honors the guests, and you can always break the rules, but if you have no idea of where you are in terms of time, then that's how you can potentially really get lost even within the content itself. And then I think the other thing is branding. You know, For us, it's pretty simple. We have signs that we use uh, a couple different ways. Just, they just pop up signs with our Think Media branding or our event, hashtag grow a video. And, and those are some subtle things, you know? Throw up your brand on the screen with your desktop wallpaper or the first slide of your presentation. So you're always thinking about the brand you're building 
and the details around what you want people to experience and feel when they come in the room. You know, this was all about audio, video, and lighting, but we could definitely get into in a future video, you know, things from the experience and gifts and all that kind of stuff. And you know, by the way, if you ever wanna be a part of one of our events, you can actually check us out at growvideolive.com or thinkmediamastermind.com. And of course, we'll summarize everything in this video in the description below. And we'd love to serve you and help you build your influence faster with online video um, and really help you build your business. You know, in this event that we're about to do, we go into some of the advanced stuff, some of the behind the scenes of what we've done over the years here at Think Media to scale to multiple seven figures and scale our team. And, and there's, all many, there's so many different stages when it comes to this building your business and your influence online. And so anyways, I hope you got value out of this training and this video. Let me know your feedback in the comments section below. Smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.